Hey, what's up guys? This is uh, Tarek here. All right, we just saw a massive, truly massive Apple Watch update during the Apple WWC event that honestly took me by surprise. And I'm telling you, Apple is steadily making strides in the fitness watch industry, taking on the big boys like Garmin, and they are doing it in their own Apple way. I was actually surprised by these updates coming to Watch OS 10, so let's dive into them. And before we do, let me just clarify that Watch OS is the operating system of the Apple Watch, not the actual watch itself. And Watch OS 10 is the latest version of that operating system. It is not yet released to the public. First, it will be released to developers. Then we should see a public beta release sometimes in early July. After that, it will be rolled out to the public and you will be able to update your watch and play around with it. All right, with that out of the way, let's dive into the first fitness related update. And uh, let me tell you, this one is monumental. One of the most significant announcements during the event was the integration of third party sensors. And I'm talking about power meters, cadence and speed sensors. Up until now, Apple watches did not natively support third-party Bluetooth sensors other than uh, heart rate sensors. Yes, there were apps that enable uh, pairing uh, with other sensors and I may even made a whole entire video about them. But to be honest, they kind of fell short in terms of usability. They were cumbersome to navigate and honestly, I found myself not using them. But now with this update, pairing your Bluetooth compatible power meter or cadence sensor or speed sensor with the workout Apple app should be much easier and integrate seamlessly into Apple's cycling workout app. With this integration of cycling power meters, Watch OS will now be able to estimate your functional threshold power or FTP. And for those who are unfamiliar with this term, FTP in cycling lingo is the maximum average power you can sustain for a full hour. It is the one crucial metric when it comes to training with a power meter and provides insights into your overall cycling performance. And to estimate your FTP, the Apple Watch will take into account data from your power meter sensor, your heart rate and motion data from the watch itself. And I am really curious to see how close this estimation value will get to the results of an actual FTP test. And I'm also uh, hope that Apple will likely provide an option for cyclists to manually enter their FTP if they already have that number. And uh, we'll delve into this deeper uh, once the watch OS 10 officially drops. So make sure to subscribe to my channel to stay updated. And there's that kind of magic that unfolds when you are using a power meter and you know your FTP. The Apple Watch will utilize this data along with your heart rate to automatically determine your power zones. But it's not just about figuring out these zones. The watch will also display the zones you are currently in while riding and even the time you spent in each zone. Now, that is pretty cool. Now, this next update really caught me off guard and it's not just for the cyclists out there, it will impact runners too. And we're talking about new workout API. This update aims to create seamless experience for users to of third party fitness apps like Training Peaks, for example. This new API will allow uh, apps like Training Peaks to push custom workouts directly to the Apple Watch uh, and even Apple showed Training Peaks in their demo. What does this mean for you? If you are a Training Peaks uh, user and you create a custom workout or your create or your coach, I mean, your coach create a workout for you, that workout will sync to your watch automatically just like it currently does with Garmin devices, Wahoo by computers and apps like Zwift, Trainer Road and so on. Until now, the only way to create workouts uh, was through the watch interface itself. And it's going to be interesting to see how other fitness apps like Final Search, for example, utilize this new API. And I am sure they're all over it already. Also, developers will be able to tap into data from Apple's motion sensors on the Apple Watch Series 8 and Ultra. These advanced sensors uh, can detect rapid changes in direction and acceleration. Think swinging a golf club or tennis racket. And leveraging this new workout API, developers can now access this high frequency motion data, and this will allow them to analyze uh, in depth data like the dynamics of your golf swing or the power behind your tennis serve. Another addition that Apple has made is the capability for workouts from Apple Watch to automatically surface uh, as a live activity on the iPhone. When you tap this live activity, it takes over the entire iPhone display. What this means for cyclists 
this is that they can mount their phones on the handlebar and have access to metrics such as elevation, power zones, current and maximum speed, hot rate and more right at their fingertips and i've got to say this is nice it's so much convenient more convenient to have this information displayed right in front of you instead of having to glance down at your watch or wrist while cycling plus there are plenty of affordable phone mounts available that allows you to easily attach your phone to your handlebar and this feature will come in really handy with other workout as well i'm sure now let's talk about other updates that are also fitness related and we'll start with Apple Maps. Apple Maps got a nice upgrade too. It now features new topographic maps complete with trail heads, contour lines, hill shading, elevation gains, and more, and that is initially launching in the US. Also, you will be able to search and discover nearby trails, as well as a review a trailhead category that offers additional information like trail name, uh, difficulty level, length, elevation gain, and more uh, before you go out on your hike. And also the Compass app got an update. Now it will automatically generate two new waypoints. One that indicates the last place where you had a cell signal and uh, it's called last cellular connections uh, waypoint, clearly. And another one called last emergency call waypoint. That points out where you, on your route, you can make an emergency call. This update is incredibly useful, especially if you are hiking in a remote location with uh, no cell signal. In case of an emergency, this feature will show you where on your route you can make an emergency call using an available carrier network. On top of that, they've introduced a new elevation view that uses altimeter data. With this, you can visualize a three-dimensional view of your saved waypoints. Other updates showcased during the WWDC event, WatchOS 10 will now support name drop, an airdrop based contact exchange feature that simplifies sharing contact information. Simply bring your phone close to another phone or Apple Watch and uh, voila, your uh, uh, contact information is exchanged. Apple also showcased a new watch interface with new widgets. Uh, this kind of remind me of the glasses feature introduced in the original Apple Watch and later removed in WatchOS 3. Not sure if you remember that one, but with WatchOS 10, you can scroll through various widgets to access common activities like viewing the weather, checking calendar, appointments, tracking activities, checking stocks, and more. This should simplify the interface a little bit and give you quick access to that information that you use the most. So I made a video right after Apple announced the Apple Watch Ultra last year, where I specifically discussed what Apple needed to do to attract more athletes, particularly cyclists and triathletes who crave data. And I specifically mentioned in that video that support for third-party sensors like power mirrors and some form of API workout integration is crucial for these athletes. And lo and behold, Apple has delivered, maybe they are watching my videos. Tim Cook, how you doing? The only thing left on my list is native heart rate broadcasting, which is sort of there, but only through a third-party app, which can be clunky. But with these updates and the enhanced mapping, Apple Watch is closing the gap with other fitness trackers on the market. And I must say, it is nice to see Apple enhancing support for cycling, from automatic cycling activity detection and fall detection that triggers emergency calls and make a call for you, to the new support for third-party power meters, cadence, and speed sensors. I'm excited to see all these new features coming and cannot wait to test them out once uh, I get my hands on the new WatchOS 10. So make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for more information. Now over to you. Are these updates enough to make you switch to the Apple Watch? What are you most excited about? Is there anything you think Apple missed? Let's discuss in the comments. Thanks for watching and I hope you found this video helpful and do not forget to tap that like button. It does help the channel and the video quite a bit. And if you are still watching but have not subscribed yet, then you know what to do. Thanks again and I'll catch you in the next video.